Out of control inflation, it now takes at least $177,798 for a family of four to live comfortably in the United States, Michael Snyder reports. I never imagined that we would ever see a time when it takes $177,798 for a family of four to live comfortably in the United States. Unfortunately, that day has arrived. Our leaders have been pursuing highly inflationary policies for many years, and now we have reached a point where inflation is widely out of control. In fact, the latest wholesale inflation figure that was released on Tuesday came in much higher than expected. Sadly, this is just the beginning, and we're in for far more trouble than most people realize. According to an incredibly shocking new study, most Americans do not make enough money to live comfortably in the highly inflationary environment that we find ourselves in today. A recent study has revealed the incomes needed for families to live comfortably across the United States, and the stark contrast in the cost of living between states is startling. The study revealed that in the most expensive states, families need nearly $300,000 to simply live comfortably. The least expensive state requires about half that salary, still over $100,000. Meanwhile, the average annual salary in the U.S. is $59,428 or $28.34 an hour as of May 2024. The study determined that Massachusetts is the most expensive state. It takes a whopping $301,184 a year for a family of four to live comfortably there. The least expensive state is Mississippi. In the Magnolia State, it only takes $177,798 a year for a family of four to cover their expenses and maintain a satisfactory quality of life. This is our country now. I feel like I've been banging my head into a wall. For more than a decade, I have warned that this would happen, and now it's here. And even more inflation is on the way. Americans already contending with persistent and stubbornly high inflation just got more unwelcome news on Tuesday. There are more price hikes likely coming down the pike. Wholesale inflation picked up in April to its highest rate in a year, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics data released on Tuesday. In April, inflation at the wholesale level jumped 0.5% in just one month. Inflation at the wholesale level rose much more than expected in April, the latest sign that price pressures within the economy remain elevated and difficult to tame. The Labor Department said Tuesday that its producer prime price index, which measures inflation at the wholesale level before it reaches consumers, rose 0.5% in April from the previous month. If you multiply that figure by 12 months, you get 6%. And of course, you need to approximately double any number that the Biden administration gives you, gives us in order to come up with a figure that's anywhere close to accurate. By now, just about everyone realizes that the rate of inflation in this country is massively understated. For example, Joe Biden insists that the rate of inflation has been low for quite some time, but home prices have risen by more than 47% since the start of this decade. Home prices have surged 47.1% since the start of 2020, easily outstripping the gains seen in recent decades. It's according to a recent analysis by Racy Club of the Case-Shiller National Home Price Index, which showed that house prices in the 1990s and 2010s grew a respective 30.1%, and 44.7%. Let's all be honest with one another. The truth is that we are in the midst of a raging cost of living crisis that has no end in sight. And this should not surprise any of us. Our politicians continue to borrow and spend trillions upon trillions of dollars, and all of this borrowing and spending is extremely inflationary. The economic spect specter haunts America, and it's almost one that many American politicians, Republicans and Democrats, say a great deal about but are reluctant to, to address. The name of that shadow in the United States national debt 
that it is the national debt, what the U.S. Treasury Department defines as the amount of money the federal government has borrowed to cover the outstanding balance of expenses incurred over time. If you go to the Treasury's website, you can see just how big that debt is. In mid-May, it was $34.5 trillion. The pace of the growth in that debt is, equal, is equally stunning. Approximately a trillion dollars is being added to America's national debt every 100 days. Borrowing and spending another trillion dollars every 100 days is a completely and utterly insane thing to do. We really are in the end game. Today, Fed Chair Jerome Powell warned that interest rates may have to stay high for an extended period of time in order to fight inflation. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said Tuesday that it may take longer than expected for high interest rates to lower inflation and gave no hint that a recently slowing labor market could mean earlier rate cuts. We'll need to be patient and let restrictive policy do its work, Powell said during a session at the Foreign Bankers Association meeting in Amsterdam. He said it may be that high interest rates take longer than expected to do its work and bring inflation down. So far, higher rates have not solved our cost of living crisis, and that is because our politicians continue to spend money like drunken sailors. But higher rates are crushing the overall economy. Yesterday, I wrote about the restaurant apocalypse that's starting to sweep across America. Today, it got even worse. We just learned that at least 99 Red Lobster locations have been shut down and will be auctioned off. At least 99 locations of Red Lobster are being auctioned off amid questions about the Stallworth uh, seafood chain's long-term future. In a post on Monday on LinkedIn, Neil Sherman, founder and CEO of Tag EX Brands, a liquidation firm, announced he was leading the closure of more than 50 Red Lobster locations with the restaurant's equipment to be auctioned off. A web page dedicated to the liquidation showed closure locations across the U.S., including in Denver, Indianapolis, Rochester, New York, Sacramento, California, San Antonio, and San Diego. On Tuesday, a restaurant business magazine reported 99 locations were closing. For the Red Lobster workers that just lost their jobs, the end came very suddenly. A third Red Lobster employee took the news in stride, posting, Red Lobster just laid off all of us without notice and closed for good, L-M-A-O-O. -O. The employee added in reply and, and replied that Red Lobster did not tell managers until 8 a.m. yesterday. Of course, it isn't just restaurant chains that are closing locations. In fact, even Walmart is closing stores and auctioning off their inventory. After announcing that it would be shutting its doors for good, one Ohio Walmart auctioned off its remaining inventory, including flat-screen televisions, laptops, and furniture for a bargain. The Walmart at 3579 South Street, High Street in Columbus, opted not to renew its lease in a once-bustling strip plaza. Representatives announced the closure in February, claiming the store had failed to meet financial expectations. Last week, the store offloaded its merchandise through a liquidation auction. Bidding closed uh, the morning of May 10, with some items like laptops going for, you won't believe this, under $20. If interest rates stay high, we're going to see a lot more of this sort of thing. But the Federal Reserve is very hesitant to cut rates at this point because of the cost of, of the living crisis. Officials at the Fed really are caught in a deer in the headlights among a moment right now, but no matter which way they ultimately choose to go, in the short term, more stagflation is ahead. And in the long term, the exceedingly foolish policies that our leaders have been pursuing are going to result in a systemic collapse of absolutely epic proportions. This is by Michael Snyder on the Economic Collapse blog. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support. Michael's new book entitled Chaos, available in paperback and for Kindle on Amazon, 
and you can check out his new Substack newsletter right here. About the author, Michael Snyder, extremely controversial new book, Chaos, available in paperback and Kindle on Amazon. He's also written seven other books in, uh, available on Amazon, including End Time, Seven Year Apocalypse, Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, The Beginning of the End, and Living a Life That Really Matters, Commissions Earned. When you purchase any of Michael's books, you help to support the work that he's doing. You can also get his articles by email as soon as he publishes them by subscribing to his Substack newsletter. Michael has published thousands of articles on the Economic Collapse blog, End of the American Dream, the most important news, and he always freely and happily allows others to republish those articles on their own websites. You can connect with Michael on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and share his articles on your own social media accounts. It's definitely a great help. These are such troubled times and people need hope. John 3.16 tells us about the hope that God has given us through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you have not already done so, we strongly urge to you to invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior today. I support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily, and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below.